Hi, I'm Greg Hunter. This is the weekly news wrap up number 196, the WNW 196 for Friday, June 26th, 2015, last Friday in June, and the enormous concocted lie called Obamacare was upheld in the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court uh, uh, opinion uh, basically rewrote the law. Justice Scalia said, you know, words don't have any meaning anymore. Uh, they uh, rewrote the law and they said because, oh, they couldn't have more than 8 million people not get their subsidies. I mean, the Supreme Court got really involved in policy and not interpreting the law. They are now policy makers at the Supreme Court. Uh, you know, there's also a bill which I don't think will, will get signed into law because Obama will veto it because he's not going to, you know, punish his Supreme Court buddies with this. But there's a, a law, a bill, I'm sorry, a bill uh, that has uh, come up in the House after this, which was fast work, to force the Supreme Court to uh, go on to Obamacare and lose their exemption to it. I don't think anybody ought to have exemption to it. If you vote for it, if you had it, you should have it. Many members, most members of Congress are exempt from the garbage they passed. I don't think it'll go because I don't think Obama will sign it into law. But still, it, you know, they're just doing it as a political ploy, but it's, it's a good ploy. I mean, they, oh, oh, you're exempt from the law that you just said that we all have to pay for. You know, the people, you know, that are uh, whose, whose uh, premiums have, uh, you know, doubled and skyrocketed. And, you know, to give the, ex, the you know, to the, give these the subsidies to people, it's not like we go to a subsidy tree. The subsidies have to come from somewhere, and it comes from the lion's uh, share of people whose uh, premiums went up, not down. They went up. They're not eligible for the subsidies. They're eligible for paying a lot more for their premiums and getting less. Uh, you know, and I, you think that uh, me calling it an enormous concocted lie is uh, over the top? I don't think so. I mean, Jonathan Gruber, the MIT economics professor, uh, who bragged on multiple videos how it, uh, how they basically it was a giant concocted lie, and they, you know, non-transparency was their friend, and Americans are stupid, and the whole deal. Uh, you know, the White House tried to distance themselves from Gruber and said, you know, he really wasn't a key player. Yet another lie as emails came out this week and yes the emails proved he was a key player this is the way uh, it's been published uh, you know in some places like this one i got from fox news and it said that uh, gruber was quote frequently consulted by staffers and advisors from both the white house and uh, the department of health and human services that's hhs about the affordable care act yes he was a key player in this enormous concocted biggest policy lie in the history of America that is uh, Obamacare a huge lie that the president and the Democrats can be proud of the uh, uh, President Obama says that uh, the Obamacare is quote here to stay and Democrats say it's going to be a campaign issue in 2016 uh, but you know I don't have much faith in the Republicans, I should say. It's going to be a campaign issue in 2016. I don't have a lot of faith in the Republicans for what they just polled, uh, and I just call it trade treason. The Republicans and some key Democrats voted for trade treason. It's the, uh, uh, the Trade Promotion Authority, TPA. I don't, want, I don't want to just give you the letters. I want to give you the actual uh, what it is. The Trade Promotion Authority, TPA, and the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP. Uh, you think I'm being uh, over the top with that, too, calling it trade treason? I don't know. What do you call a secret law? You know, where the congressmen and senators had to go into a room and not take anybody and not take a picture, not take a cell phone, couldn't even take a pen or a pencil to write any notes down. Uh, what do you call a secret law uh, that is passed like this? They call it, uh, you know, fast track authority. What they ought to really call it is neuter Congress uh, legislation. There is no uh, debate. There is no filibuster. There is no amendments allowed none of that is allowed uh, congress just gets to vote yes or no they call it up or down they get to vote yes or no that's it that's what they get uh, all it really is is a way to ramrod stuff that they want to make secret through congress so people can't uh, debate it people can't put out sound bites people can't say anything about it if they say something about if they go into that room and they look at this law and they reveal details about the law 
uh, they can be uh, charged uh, with a felony and prosecuted. Oh, yes, we the people do eventually get to see it, depending on which law, in four or five years when it's declassified. Uh, you listen to the Republicans. Oh, this is one of the most important pieces of legislation. Really? Let's see it. Oh, oh, it's secret. Oh, that's right. It's secret. Well, can you tell me about it? Oh, no, no, no. You can't. You'll be charged with a felony. Yeah, that's good for American people. I'll take your word for it. It's absolutely outrageous and un unbelievable, this secret law. And uh, we don't get to see it at all. How did this get through, you say? And this is according to a zero hedge, which they produced, uh, you know, a chart here. And this uh, basically graph shows, you know, the people, the companies that gave this top one, the very top one, $200,000 they gave to, you know, fund, uh, you know, just in this year, just in the first few months of this year, to fund the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the TPP. That's Goldman Sachs. That's Goldman Sachs. Number two is uh, UPS, and then there's Citigroup and Federal Express, and Boeing's on here, and and uh, Walmart, and uh, you know uh, other people are on here. Uh, unbelievable. Here's here's instead of helping Americans, here, wh who we're helping is corporate America. After all, they are people, according to the Supreme Court. Corporations are people. And according to um, you can find this chart on my uh, website in my, uh, you know, my story section on the site. Uh, according to Zero Hedge, they had only cost uh, the corp corporate Americans or these corporations only seventeen thousand six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars per yes vote. Only seventeen six seventy-five, seventeen thousand six hundred seventy-five thousand dollars per yes vote. That's all it cost to buy the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Uh, what's in it? Well, it's a secret, but there's been you know, you know, some WikiLeaks and things like that. Is it going to hurt our sovereignty? I don't know. It's secret. Uh, is it going to be able to uh, allow corporations to sue uh, you know, uh, cities and states and the federal government if they lose money? According to what's been leaked out, yes. Is there anti-gun legislation in there? I don't know. It's a secret. Is it going to be more giveaways to corporations? Secret. Is it going to help Americans? Secret. Secret, 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 secret. Is it going to cost Americans jobs? Well, they put in there retraining for people who lose their jobs because of this. So, yeah, yeah, yes, it is. And did I tell you it's secret? I called my uh, two senators in the state, uh, Burr and Tillis, and told their office people, you don't get to talk to them, and say they should be ashamed of themselves. You pass secret legislation. You were supposed to go to Washington and help we the people. And you know who you helped? We the corporation. You didn't help Americans. And if you were helping us, if you were helping Americans, you wouldn't do this in the dark. And as I have said before, evil is done in the dark. And this is a famous quote. It's not mine. Evil is done in the dark. Good is done in the light. This is being done in the dark. And something that I say, one of my quotes is, you know, hey, listen, Democrats and Republicans, they just take turns ripping us off. And this proves it. The TPP proves it. And listen, it's not just the, uh, the Republicans, although most Democrats voted against it. Ted Cruz ultimately voted against it. Good for you, Ted Cruz. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, there's some key Democrats that voted for this, but most of the Democrats voted against it. The IRS now says it accidentally erased Lois Lerner's emails. Yes, it was an accident. You know, the head of the uh, IRS went to Congress, testified in front of Congress and said, well, we, you know, we couldn't find them. They didn't have it. Uh, meanwhile, while he was testifying, while there was an investigation, I should say, going on, they were destroying the emails. Yep, all 24,000 of them. They even ground up Lois Lerner's hard drive while the investigation was going on while Congress was asking the IRS for these emails, and they were told, "Oh, yeah, no, uh, we don't know where they are." They were, de they knew where they were to destroy them. And did I tell you they said it was an accident? More proof: this has become a government of men and not laws, and that's bad for America. The Iran deal is going south, and as I predicted. Uh, five now, five top former White House uh, advisors and administration officials, top White House people, say this is a bad deal. Uh, this includes General uh, Petraeus, who's former CIA director, 
General Petraeus. Yes, I know he had trouble with his, uh, you know, the person who was uh, authoring his book, and, you know, he got into trouble over that. But, uh, listen, lots of people. And, you know, Petraeus, former general and head of the CIA. And, you know, listen, everybody in Washington, they say, has these, these sexual things. I'm not saying that's right. But, I mean, you know, it wasn't like he stole money or sold secrets to the Chinese or negotiated with the end or laundered, you know, money for drug cartels in uh, uh, countries on the terrorist, you know, like our banks did. Petraeus got more for his uh, a tryst with this woman than the banks did for laundering money for terrorists. But he and other people say the deal's not tough enough, not good for America, not a good deal. It is not a good deal. And uh, uh, other people in the Bush administration say the same thing. Ditto. Now, Iran has already said it will not allow inspections of its nuclear sites, of its military nuclear sites. Not going to do it. Iran has also demanded that when they sign the deal, they have their sanctions lifted immediately. Even the president said no deal. No deal on that. And Congress was so upset about it that they, uh, you know, wrote a bill that was veto-proof that the better, that the uh, president signed, and uh, basically said we could approve any deal you have with Iran. That if that's what our Iran is saying, if that is what Petraeus and people on his administration, top administration officials in the Obama administration, and also top officials in the Bush administration, 43, are saying this is a bad deal. It needs to be tougher. Do you think Congress is going to approve a weak deal? A deal where Iran says, well, no, you can't inspect our military sites. And you can't, uh, we're going to, we want these sanctions lifted immediately. I know you said you want to release them over time, but no, no, it has to be immediate. I, it's no deal. There's no deal. What does it mean? Does it mean war? Does it mean we'll back down? Does it mean they'll back down? I don't know. Uh, but there is going to be no deal. There's also going to be, oh, well, one thing I want to tell you too, too. Uh, and this came out, so we have this news coming out with, uh, you know, about these five top people in the Obama administration. Well, last week, I didn't get this in a weekly news wrap-up, but look at this headline here. Uh, Acts of terrorism up 35% last year. Well, what, boy, this is a skewed headline. Really, acts of terrorism by Iran have doubled. Iran is the top, you know, top sponsor of terrorism. And the acts, the deaths by Iran, uh, these acts of terrorism, not just up 35%. The deaths are up 100%. They've doubled. It's 33,000 people have been killed by acts of terrorism, mostly at the hands of Iran, the number one, numero umers, uno, state sponsor of terrorism. This is an Obama administration report that the State Department uh, contracted out. The, this is from basically the Obama administration and the State Department. That uh, it's up 35%, and the body count has doubled to 33,000 people killed uh, by acts of terror, mostly from Iran, according to the U.S. State Department and the Obama administration. Greece, talk about a deal that's not going to happen. But have you guys been watching this? Have you been reading the quotes back and forth? Ugly. There is no, I see, unless there's a miracle, I don't see any way there's going to be a deal with this debt. Maybe it's because the ECB has already been funneling money into the Greek banks, even though there's no deal, which tells me they're in a very weak position. I told you about Deutsche Bank having $73 trillion in derivatives. That's in Germany. I mean, what is that, 20 times the Greek GDP? you got to grasp that, folks. That's just one bank in Germany with this kind of leverage. Uh, with, I'm sure, all kinds of uh, uh, derivatives on interest rates. And if this deal goes south, oh boy, bonds are going to be in trouble. I mean, I'm going to have Michael Pento on to talk about this uh, coming up. And uh, it's, I just, I don't see a deal. I, I don't know. The deadline is coming up uh, next week, next to Tuesday. Are they going to extend it? Are they going to kick the can some more? I don't know, but it doesn't look good. Uh, hey, folks, we're still in that recovery. Here is USA Today money section. Hey, there's 10 stocks. You know, new peaks with fuel to burn. Really? <laughs> new. <laughs> they want to mail you to think. Oh, look at up 10 stocks with you know new new peaks and fuel to burn, as if there's a recovery. What did Carl Icahn, billionaire investor Carl Icahn, who just sold uh, all of his shares of Netflix? 
What did he just say that uh, he's worried about the stock market and the bond market and bubbles? And uh, my uh, my money's on a guy that puts his own money up in investing, not the USA Today that's constantly doing positive stories and telling us why there is some sort of recovery when indeed they are not. I'm also going to have John Williams on uh, next week, and he echoes that. I mean, he called the first quarter a contraction, even though they revised it up a little bit. He called there'd be a first quarter contraction, and he's calling for a second quarter contraction and that the government may go crazy printing money after that happens to try to stave off an implosion but that's all next week on USA Watchdog and the next final thing is is this and I had some woman write me a, a, a you know an email some journalist and said you have to do a story this has been all over the news this rebel flag I mean this st- crazy stupid kid killed these people in this church in south carolina and it morphed into a, a, a talk about the flag this woman writes me and says well you got it can you please publish my story about the rebel flag this could you please and i wrote her back and said we're getting ready for a financial implosion we are at war in the Middle East. We look like we're going to go to war uh, in Eastern Europe. I, I don't know if you noticed this or you heard about this, but the U.S. sent more tanks and armored uh, vehicles uh, to the Baltic states, like 250, most of which are tanks. Russia's upset about this. They feel threatened by it as they should. Oh, and don't forget China. Uh, in the South China Sea and tensions rising there. So we have uh, a impending possible financial calamity that I think is coming, and a lot of other people do. The possible war in Eastern Europe with Russia, an ongoing war in uh, the Middle East with Iraq and Syria and the Islamic State, which is not going well, and the president doesn't have a strategy. He said that again. He doesn't have a strategy yet. And also tensions rising in the South China Sea over China, building these islands. And I said, please, Stop. You have to be kidding. I'm not interested. Thank you for your email. I mean, this this 160-year-old flag takes precedent over, over the trade. Have you heard much at the, at the, the new TT, uh, TPP? Have you heard much how they sold us out, the Republicans and some Democrats? Have you, have you heard much about that? Have you heard much about uh, you know how uh, you know this uh, Greece could cause an implosion? And it's not just Greece; it's all these other countries that are heavily leveraged. And there, there's a, according to the Bank of International Settlements, a quadrillion in derivatives. That's the official number: a thousand trillion debt bits. So uh, I told her, uh, please stop. <laughs> I'm not interested. I think it's. I, you know, it's a, it's a look over here, look over here, look over here story when the real stories that will affect you, that are coming, that are going to affect you, the mainstream media publishes very little or what they do publish, uh, they omit so much stuff, it's a lie by omission. That's the way I see it. I'm Greg Hunter. Thank you for supporting USA Watchdog with your comments. Thank you for supporting USA Watchdog with your donations. It helps us. Fear not. Prepare yourself mentally, physically, and above all, spiritually, fear not.